Hey, thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kelly Trainer. I'm in the biology department. I've been having an eye now for a few years. And uh, what I want to do just for the next few minutes is share with you kind of how I'm running my classes online and kind of talk to you a little bit about why I decided to kind of go this route with my own web page, uh, kind of what I use it for, uh, the different, uh, then I'll just take a few, min few moments to take you through the web page to show you some of the features that I have on there and then kind of wrap it up with kind of ups upsides and downsides to doing something like this. Um, so first of all, the, you know, as I've been using Blackboard for a number of years, there definitely are some limitations to using Blackboard. Uh, I found that you know, one of the most frustrating things for some of my students is that once they're done with the semester, they can no longer access that information. And so I wanted to have a way to, where I could preserve the longevity of that information so students can come back and use that whenever they wanted. Uh, the other thing I wanted to be sure that I could do is that I, I kind of have the philosophy, and I realize I don't agree with everyone on this philosophy, and probably even don't agree with people in this room on this philosophy, but I feel like education needs to be open access for the most part. And as far as I can remain within the bounds of copyright issues, I feel as a community college educator, and we have taxpayers that are paying for our salaries, the things that I should do, I should make available to the community. Now, whether that's the local community or the worldwide community, to me, it doesn't matter. So I think that, for me, it was an important step to kind of go that direction. The other thing that I found is that when you go this direction, it really is a, uh, encourages you to do your best work <laughs> because, you, you know, anybody has access to it. And so it, it really, you know, there have been times where, you know, I've been tired, but I'm like, no, I need to make sure I do this because anybody can see this. Um, and so, uh, yeah, no, 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 no one really watches, checks it out. And so, you know, and getting back to the blackboard, you know, I liked, uh, I wanted to be able to create my own thing and have whatever I wanted to do. And so that, those are really the reasons why I, I went this route. Um, and really, the, the thing that kicked me out of the door of blackboard was when we went to the upgrade and we had some issues and things, I could no longer do the things that I normally did. And so that was just like, all right, time to, time to do this. So I put this on uh, using a, uh, a program called WordPress, and I'm, gonna, I'm actually doing a summer institute workshop on how to go about doing this a little more in depth, about an hour and a half of things that you need to think, think about and keep in mind before you do that. Now, in terms of what I use this for is I teach uh, classes that are both face-to-face, -face, but also a number of hybrid classes. And so my hybrid classes are classes where I have an online lecture component, but then we meet for live labs. So I see my students once a week. Now, I have also taught totally online classes and varieties of different hybrids that were almost completely online. But just to give you an idea of kind of how I'm using this, uh, this setup. And so um, let me just kind of take you through what I have going on. The, the design that I wanted to make sure that I followed as much as possible was to make it as easy to follow for students as it could be. Meaning, you know, sometimes you get to these web pages where you have all these options of this, you know, click here, click here, do all these things. I wanted it to be pretty clear. And so that's the way I've set this up is the, the kind of the template that I use allows me to kind of set up these tabs so when you come to this first page, when you log in, you can either, you know, click directly and go into the course site itself, or you can do so by clicking on one of these tabs. And so in just a minute, I'll uh, show you kind of how I have that set up. But with this, you know, it's really similar to how I actually had my Blackboard site set up. You know, we had all these buttons down the left-hand side. I wanted to kind of keep it somewhat in line with what students might see in Blackboard. Um, and so here I have, you know, links to all of my syllabi. I have announcements uh, that, you know, I post on a regular basis just like we had, uh, you know, contact hours and info and so on. If we click on, uh, you know, on these syllabus buttons, it's nice because I, you know, just like with Blackboard, I can embed content right in here. Students can view things or, or do whatever they want to. Um, however, the nice thing about being outside of Blackboard and using this environment is that I can plug in all kinds of other kind of cool features that allows me to, to do some different things. So for example, uh, the calendar, I have a, this is linked to a Google Calendar uh, so that it's a visual representation of my course calendar for students so they can just 
you know, highlight whichever class they're in and it tells them what we're doing the, those days. So, and that's interactive. I have this plugged in with my own Google Calendar that my wife and I use so I know where I am at, at any moment in time with class. And, and she knows where I am as well, probably more important for her. Um, and then, um, you know, the announcements button, you know, it's just like announcements that you have, but uh, I have some nice features where this is just basically a blog post, but I have all my textbook information, things like that for, for students as well. Um, now, as far as these resources are concerned, I have links to a number of animations that I use in my classes. Um, one of the most important links is downloads and updates so that students, whatever computer they're on, first thing I do is have them make sure that they upload all the appropriate uh, you know, upgrades and up, you know, whatever things they might need to be current with any of the software that I'm using as part of my, this website. Um, so standard kind of resources and things. Another thing that's nice is that I have a feature here that allows them to have an RSS feed so they can link directly to my announcements so that any time I post an announcement, it goes right to maybe their own blog or if they use iGoogle or any reader page that has an RSS feed like what Todd was just talking about. And I also have a feature here where they can get a, uh, an email alert or just get emailed my announcement so that anything that I post, they can just plug in their email address and then without having to check the announcements page every day. So this has turned out to, to be pretty helpful. Um, and then kind of as, as far as kind of other features, is that I was able to include this uh, chat feature for free uh, through WordPress. And what this allows me to do is that during my office hours, it has a nice little login thing here with uh, Facebook. So I can just, uh, let me just log in real quick. And then that but I typed everything right, that'll just log me in. So this is linked directly with my Facebook profile. So when I'm sitting there at my office hours, I have this little chat feature up. Students that are typically online following the lectures or things, if they have questions, they can just chat with me right there. And I'll be honest, I get chats all the time. You know, students don't like to email. You know, email is now kind of going the way of the dinosaur. They like instant, you know, instant gratification, instant responses, those types of things. And so. When I'm sitting there, I'll get chats you know, throughout the week. And so my number of phone calls have dropped precipitously. My emails from students have dropped precipitously because they can get in touch with me right there. And it shows them that I'm online. And so uh, that's, that's been really nice for this semester. And I can do that for free. I can have up to 20 people chatting at once, I think, for free. Um, and so on. So those are some of the, the features and things. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. That. No, they don't. That's just so that that pulls up my information from Facebook. Um, they can log in at anonymously, and it just assigns them a guest name. Um, they can, if they want to log in, they can do so with Facebook or through the company has their own login so stuff. There's different ways for that chat tool to connect to, to other places. Other okay, so they're yeah. Not on Facebook. That's what I'm they not have to be on Facebook. No, they don't have to. In fact, they can even just right here when they log in. Um, you can sign in as a, or you don't have to sign in. You, anybody that's on this page, I see that they're on the page, and they can just, it assigns them a guest name, and they can just chat to me anonymously with so it. WordPress is actually hosting that. Yeah, uh, yes, it's company Involve, which is linked with WordPress. Okay. Yeah, and I'll talk more about that at the, the Summer Institute as well. That, those are some of the little the features. Now, when we take a look at a, a single class, so for example, we click on this, let me just show you how I have this stuff set up. Again, I wanted to make this basically one click away from where they needed to be, okay? So that they, when they got there, it was just kind of like, all right, I just need to click this button so I could see what's going on. And so let me just scroll down. I have things posted by week, similarly to what I, the way I had it set up in Blackboard, where I have a folder for each week. And so, for example, I, on one side, I give a little outline that I basically just cut and paste from the syllabus. Um, over what we're going to be doing, you know, in class during the lab. I have their online lectures here, and then their, all their materials on the right-hand side. So on the left is kind of the little outline of what they need to do for the current week, and then I also am trying to stay a week ahead and tell them what they need to be prepared for for the next week. 
as well as those next week's materials here. And so uh, since my lectures are online, I, I feel it's important that there's a, a narrative component to kind of uh, materials that students get, especially in an online environment. I think that oral part of teaching is important. And so I use a program uh, known as Articulate that allows me to basically uh, deliver my content um, you know, online this way. And it's really nice because it comes with a little player and you know, they kind of go through all these things and it also allows me to embed you know, activities and things that I've pulled off from the, from the publisher sites and all these different things I can incorporate everything in together and have quizzes and make it as interactive as possible. So that's more or less how I handle kind of the, the lecture side. Um, the other thing I do is I have, you know, all of my labs and handout sheets are uh, uploaded onto Scribed. And so students have access to all these handouts. They can download them. They can print them right from there. They can do whatever they want. And so try to make it as easy for them to just, it looks like it's all in one place, but really there's things, you know, I have things in all, all over the place. Sorry, Doug, where's the, where are the articulate presentations located? Uh, where are they? Um, so they are on my server, they're in a folder on my server. So they're at kellytrainer.com slash bio201 okay. is the folder that they're at. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of where, how I use this. Now the nice thing with this is that, you know, obviously there are copyright issues that you have to be concerned with with the internet. And so the, ni the thing I like about this is although I have, people have free access to uh, my different uh, parts of my website, there are certain things that I can lock down that students have to have passwords to get into. So for example, these lower limb review sheets are not things that I just want to have put out there. They're actually uh, taken from a lab manual that would be okay to use copies within a classroom, but they're not, it's not okay for worldwide distribution essentially. So I've provided, I was able to just lock these down with a password that all my students know that they can access that information. Okay, so uh, it does give me options for that. Same thing. Uh, Did you change that password at the end of the I'm not planning on it because I want to let students that have already taken the class still have that information. And so uh, the only way they can get that information is to be in my class. Unless I find that there's stuff going everywhere, then I, you know, down the road I can change it. The other thing I've done is that within my lectures, I've included a lot of animations to help them understand a lot of these different processes and things. Um, but I also have included these animations in another, um, you know, here, again, password protected because they're from the publishers. Um, and so, uh, then I'll just open this up. And so here I have all of these animations that students can get to on their own that are already included in the lectures. And so they're, they're already available to them in the lectures automatically, but then I've posted them here. Now, just to back up for a second, the reason I like to use Articulate, one of the reasons is that it's a flash-based program, which means that as students are looking at and watching the, the presentation, if there's links, they can't right-click on those links and copy them everything's kind of been closed. So as far as teaching goes, I really like that program for kind of giving me some uh, copyright protections there. Okay. Um, how are we doing so far? Doing okay on time? Seven minutes. Okay. Um, so those are some of the things that are kind of the big things with this. Um, another thing that I like about uh, having this site is that I can obviously include uh, links to other sites that are uh, very good, um, but I have links to other instructors that are doing their their own things as well. And so what I'm finding that's really interesting is, you know, I've posted some of Ellen's, uh, you know, lecture material here. She does the same thing with the narrated lectures and that kind of stuff. About 10% of my traffic now are students that are going to Ellen's stuff from my site, <laughs> um, which is great. I mean, that's the whole idea is making it easier for students to go from one class to another to be able to see, all right, this is what this instructor is doing, this is what this instructor is doing, this is what this person is doing, and maybe being able to figure out who, they, who fits best for them. Okay? Um, and so this is just really kind of an overview of 
what I'm doing and, and kind of why I'm doing it. Um, yeah. Can you click on your narrated lectures from the uh, archive thing? Yeah. So I show this page to uh, a nursing faculty. And what this, if you scroll, scroll down there a little bit, everything that's in orange there is like a narrated, like hour long thing about whatever he's talking about. And I showed that to the nursing, uh, nursing faculty, and they just said, why don't, I, why don't my students have this? Why don't their students have that? What a great, and there it is. You just, you know? Yeah, and, and that's, that's the one thing. So these are some lectures that I've done on this side on the right for Bio 156. These are all my narrated lectures that I've done. Um, and so it's great because as a teacher for 201, Bio 156 is a prerequisite for that class. And we don't have time to go back over and cover all the stuff that they should have already learned in Bio 156. So at the beginning of the semester, I tell them, here's this page with all these links. If you don't feel comfortable, like you know the material as well as you should, or if it's been 10 years since you've taken Bio 156 and need to refresh, go back here, especially focus on you know, maybe these lectures here to get a refresh so that when they come back, they're kind of up to speed. And so I found a lot, actually a lot of my students uh, have been using that uh, this this feature started you know this semester so again this goes back to the longevity of stuff where you can whatever you make you could leave there so that students can or anybody can come and find this information and these lectures that you um, teaching on your classes and they take to or are these things that you did aside from class and post well these are our these are all lectures that were produced using articulate so just like the player that i showed you before every single one of these were you know which i recorded sitting at my computer and doing different things and so that's how i that's articulate's been my primary delivery method for my online lectures other people use camtasia uh, uh you know and do, doing different things like that um adobe presenter as well is out there and doing and some things um, let's see, there was one other thing I, I wanted to mention real quick is that, so who is ac accessing, accessing my site? You know, the nice thing about having your own website is you can track all that information. And it's pretty amazing that I find that, well, first of all, I have, you know, gigabytes of bandwidth, you know, people, you know, watching this stuff all the time. It allows me to track to see when students are watching. So I find that 10 o'clock at night are peak hours for students watching this stuff. Um, since I'm not linked with the school system, I, I've never had any, my site's never been down as long as they could access it. Um, and then in, as far as who's watching, I've noticed that about a third of my viewers are actually from Phoenix. And so I have a number of students that are either taking biology or A&P classes in Phoenix that are accessing my, my website to help them with those. I also have some students, evidently some people in Japan that have been watching this on a regular basis as well. So you have a worldwide community you know it's it's pretty amazing what you can reach and so you know all of these things have been really you know really kind of encouraging inspiring now as far as this whole thing goes you know there are some downsides um, for one is that uh, you unless you are really proficient with creating websites and those types of things it can be a little bit daunting I use a program called WordPress which makes that very user friendly, very, very user friendly. And as soon as, and once you learn some of the basics, you can navigate yourself around and create exactly what you want to do very easily. So I'm not a I'm not an internet or a, a web page designer by any means. You know, I kind of just jumped into this thing and within, you know, a couple weeks I had something that was pretty functional and, and easy to use. Um, and so you don't have support necessarily from, you know, you can't call IT and say, hey my web page is messed up. How do I fix that? You know, it's pretty much on me to try to figure it out. Um, so that's, that's one of the downsides. Um, but, and the other thing is you kind of have to enjoy doing this stuff. You know, I enjoy kind of creating this and updating my pages because, again, it, it's on me. You know, whatever gets done, gets done. If it doesn't get done, I have nobody to blame but myself either. You know, I can't blame IT for something being down because it's never down. It always works. So, um, you know, it's, there's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things to that. But that's what I have. Do you guys have any other kind of... Questions or well, with Blackboard, when you do one semester, then it gets copied and you just sort of change a few things for the next semester. How do you deal with on that first page you were showing where you had week seven, then you have the date? You're going to have to go in and change the dates every time for these different. Yeah, I, and I did in Blackboard every time, anyways. 
I never copied things over. I mean, I would copy because I change things all the time right. from one semester to another. And so, yeah, what if, if I go back into, you know, for example, this class, um, it's starting next semester, I'll go back in and, and put this stuff in each week. The nice thing is that this is a lot faster than working within the Blackboard environment. I can copy and paste, and even though I have to do more things, such as, uh, you know, I have to make sure the formatting and the colors and all that stuff looks good, I've done it so much now that I can just click, click, and click, and be, you know, have stuff posted and updated really quickly. And, you know, I can just copy and paste and, and do you're things. Gonna archive all that? Yeah, so all of, every, all of these lessons, uh, you know, all of these uh, online lectures are essentially the same thing that we see here. Um, and so I, I'm going to change this a little bit so that instead of having, you know, kind of a split column like this, I'll have, I'll update my, instead of my 2010 fall lectures, I'm going to put all my updated lectures from this semester in there, which have more features and, you know, activities and things like that in them. But yeah, it allows me to, and that, that's really easy to do. I can just kind of copy and paste stuff. Do you have your students still go into Blackboard to view their grades, or how do they submit assignments to you or take quizzes? Yeah, so since this is a hybrid class and I meet once a week, I actually have the luxury of both worlds. So I give in-class quizzes, okay? I could do, um, I could utilize Blackboard for some of that stuff. So I haven't really dived into that yeah. area because I haven't needed to. Um, so t quiz quizzes and tests and assessments I still give in class. I do use the, black, the grade book in Blackboard. And so that's one thing that I find is, has been, I like the grade book, you know, it's easy to use and really functional. So my, and since my students use Blackboard for all their other classes, I just say, hey, while you're in there, you know, check out your grades for this class. And so that's, that's how I do the assessment stuff. So that's a good question. And something that definitely, if you're totally online, things that you have to think about, about how you link how those things happen. Does WordPress freeware, do we have a site license for it? Well, that's a good question. So the school, it has to be put on a server. So I have my site through an outside company. So this is a paid site, kellytrainer.com. And that server hosts all of my, basically, I have a hard drive space for the web. And so I uploaded the WordPress files to that site, and those are free. And so basically my site is where all that hard drive is where I hold a lot of the WordPress files, okay? Now, as far as the college is concerned, we have, uh, as faculty, we have space on the web server, okay? But this college doesn't support WordPress. And so you can't install it on there as far as we've been able. They used to a long time ago, but now they don't. And so if you want to go this route, Using WordPress at this point, you have to you have to get your own domain and those types of things. But, um, but WordPress is open source, yeah. So that's totally free. Now, if you are a web designer, know how to do that, you can upload those things using the the faculty web server, which Larry has done with his stuff, right? You use the faculty, but not using WordPress. But not yeah, not WordPress, but using like Dreamweaver or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So WordPress is a a program that's ho that. I've uploaded those files to my site that allows me to work. As long as I'm online and have an internet connection, I could do all the things I need to do. What do you like about Articulate? How did you come to decide to use that program? Well, I like it because when you narrate, it actually plugs in directly with PowerPoint and I can go slide by slide. And so whatever I do on this slide, you know, I can move on to the next one and that audio just stays with that. Unlike Camtasia where it's screen capture and it's just kind of like one long thing and you can pause and then you can do some editing features, but Articulate, it's, it's slide by slide. It also, it's flash based and so it, it, and it allows me to include all kinds of quizzes and animations and things and, and embed things directly into it. Whereas Camtasia, since it's screen capture, I know Camtasia is getting better at allowing you to do some of these interactive things, but it, it's really designed for that. Um, and we started with this program when I was out at Chino Valley. Um, that was kind of the one that we that we used for the. For Didn't the John purchase a whole bunch of licenses for all the instructors who were going to be teaching online in Chino Valley? Yes. And then from there, so we never really had a college-wide license, but I know there were some early adopters, and we evaluated Camtasia and Articulate, and we decided well they're similar products, but we're going to stay with our with Camtasia. And so we stopped doing away with the licenses with Articulate. Mm -hmm. And I think they are about $1,000 per license. 
Yeah. So they're sort of expensive, but I, I've had instructors contact me and, and ask about Articulate. It's just a matter of time, I'm sure. Yeah. And but there's there's another program out there uh, by Adobe, Adobe Presenter or Adobe Captivate. Cap, maybe is it Captivate? One of those by Adobe that is much cheaper. It's like at an educational level, it's 150 bucks or something like that. It doesn't allow you to do all the embedding and links with quizzes and things like that. that Articulate does. Camtasia now, though, is getting better at allowing you to embed quizzes and, and some of that stuff, too. So they're all kind of moving along, you know, a little bit of time. But so anyways, that's, you know, what I have going on. You know, feel free to check it, check it out. You know, the more hits I get, the better, you know. You know. Um, and so, like I said, I'm going to be the first day on the 17th. I'm doing, a, I've provided the schedule stands is when I'm slated to do a, an hour half workshop where I'm going to go through and talk about how you kind of get something on the internet, what that entails, you know, uploading files and, and some of this stuff. And then for the first part of it, and then the second part will be talking about WordPress itself and kind of getting into the basics of that and how that works so that you can make some decisions and, about some of these things. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everybody.